What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Dealer Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City. We're going to take a quick walk around and look at some of the cars they've got coming up for sale. First one we're going to look at is a 2021 Chevy Suburban Z71, like Cadillac. Love this color. It's kind of a blue-gray. I don't know if that's going to come out on camera or not, but this is a nice color. Love the Suburban. I know what you're thinking. I don't ever buy new cars. I'm always buying really old cars. That's just kind of a staple of the channels, the old cars. Well, not to worry. I still plan on doing some older cars, but I'm also, I kind of want to see if I can take this wholesale dealership and maybe actually turn it into a profitable business. I, I, I don't know. Is that possible? Maybe, maybe not. But I figure it's worth a try. So here's what I've been doing. I've been doing some research online, trying to figure out if there's a better way to run my business. And believe me when I tell you, there's a lot of better ways to run my business. But I've been watching Flying Wheels and I've been taking some of his advice into consideration. He said what he likes to do is buy repos. Well, repos are great. They're newer model cars, less likely to have problems because they're low mileage. They're from reputable companies. And something that I took into consideration myself without any advice was what about, what about rental cars? What about rental cars? Rental cars are generally going to have clean titles. There we go. This is nice. This is nice. All right. Take a look at the dash. She's got 48,239 miles. She runs great. And no warning lights on the dash. 2021. Now, cold air, everything is gonna work. Check this out, look at this. Everything's gonna work. Less likely to get burned on something like this, right? But there's a price that you have to pay for it, a premium you're gonna have to pay for nicer, newer cars. They cost more money. You're gonna have to pay more, but being that this is a dealer auction, I'm hoping that I could get a good deal here. Let's pop the hood. Four by four, of course, headlights, towing package. Oh, wow, lane departure, parking assist, auto start, we don't want that. That's your plug for your AC outlet. You can turn on and off. You've got hill descent control, traction control, parking brake, of course, two memories for your seating. It looks like you've got your wireless charging pad right here. You've got an SD card slot, USB-A and USB-C. You've got your uh, power outlet right here. And this is weird. I don't particularly care for this, but it, it is what it is, man. This is the way things are today. The interior color, it, kind of a grayish, yeah, gray on brown, I guess is what it is. That's a little strange. You got a little cubby hole to put something right there. Oh, there's a battery in it. So, and does it have books? No, it does not have books. Obviously, this thing is in excellent condition mechanically. Very nice. Good tires all the way around. And I'm really starting to think this is what I need to be looking for. I need to be looking for newer model cars that are in more demand. Stuff that people actually want to buy instead of these weird niche cars that I like. You can't run a business doing what you love all the time. Sometimes you've got to find out what other people want to. Nice third row. It's quiet. I've already popped that hood, so let's take a look. I assume it's a 5.3 under there. Come on. Come on. There we go. Purrs like a kitten. I'm sure it's a 5.3. This isn't a Denali. Let's see. There we go. We have a 5.3. Nothing wrong with a 5.3 at all. Not something that I would choose for like towing or anything, but light duty towing? Yeah, you could do that for sure. Let's pop the back here. Lots of room. There's your books. So it does come with the books. They're just put down. You got your power seats, second and third row. That's actually really nice. This is really nice. This is really nice considering it's not a Denali. It's pretty well loaded, guys. I love the blacked out look instead of fancy chrome. It's really got a nice blacked out look to it. All right, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these because obviously they're newer and they're probably gonna be fine. How does this work? Oh, you've gotta pull up? That's weird. 
forward, backward. And look at your surround view camera. This is very nice. This is very nice. And then push to put it back into park. All right, all your climate control, heated seats. I don't see cooled seats. Defrost, blah, blah, blah. Radio controls. Yeah, I don't see uh, no cooled seats, really? I guess not. I should have noticed there's no perforations in the leather for cooled seats. All right, well, it is what it is. How many key fobs does it come with? It comes with one, and you've got remote tailgate open, open higher. Why is this guy honking at me? I think it was an accident. You've got auto start, you've got lock, you've got your horn. This is decent, really decent. I think this guy's uh, coming over here. How's it going? How you doing, buddy? Good. How much is worth uh, this one? Uh, do what? How much is worth? I have no idea. 16, 15? 15,000? No, 60,000? Uh, yeah, yeah. I sold mine with sunroof and everything. I sold it for 60, 73. Yeah, yeah. 23. All right, sorry for the interruption there, guys. It is auction view day, which means everybody comes out here. All the dealers come out here and they wanna, they wanna look around. So just bear with me if somebody jumps into the car. Um, he was telling me that he owns a dealership not too far from here. And he takes uh, a lot of cars that he buys cheap, sends them to a body shop, fixes them up, and then sends them over here to resell them. Basically just flip them without even having to put them on his lot. So pretty cool guy. I thought he was asking if that uh, <laughs> if that Suburban was fifteen or $16,000. And I was like, not a chance. I'd be, I'd be buying that all day long. He was saying fifty to 60000 because he just sold one for like seventy that was fully loaded. Anyway... Here we are at another one. This one is a, a newer Prius. And although this isn't my particular cup of tea, I still find the Prius kind of an interesting car. It's it's an extremely fuel efficient vehicle. They're notorious for being super reliable. And uh, this is a 2021. And it's only got 41,000 miles. We're in the rental group now. All of these cars down here are gonna be Avis budget rental cars that have been retired because, well, they've got 40,000 miles. I'm sure that the rental car industry has a standard for getting rid of cars. You know, when they hit 40, 50,000 miles, they probably decide this is the point in a car's life where it's still worth quite a bit of money and you haven't lost too much in depreciation and miles. There has to be a perfect spot for it. And a lot of these cars are sitting around 40 to 50,000 miles. So something like this, something like this could be really interesting. Let's pop the hatch, take a quick look at the interior. We'll do a quick walk around. You got your books and everything back there along with your tire tools. I see everything but a spare. There's the spare right there. She does, she comes with a spare. I didn't know anything came with a spare anymore. You got your little privacy cover right here. It's a little, it's a little flimsy, but there you go. Once you get it, you got it. They've got a few of these out here, and I'm thinking, I don't know how much a Prius goes for. I'm sure they're not exactly cheap, but I still think it's worth looking at. I don't think this is a very high option Prius. Uh, they used to have different levels, like level one, level two, level three. The three was as good as you could get maybe or level four i don't remember it's got a few dings but being that it is a you know a cheaper car this might be something we could afford it's got a little damage to the roof here it looks like the uh, antenna got ripped off i'm sure there's supposed to be a like an xm antenna there she's got a lot of ooh, she's wavy she's really wavy right here and up here as well so some previous damage there that got repaired but anyway some minor dings and dents I'm very interested in some of these cars. I'm gonna put them on my list and I've actually sold a lot. I've got quite a bit off of my floor plan now. And what that means is I have freed up somewhere around, let me see, $70,000. I got about 70, $75,000 on my floor plan now that can be used for buying new cars, not just for content, but maybe something I could drive and enjoy a little bit and be able to make a little money on at the same time. We'll fire it up, we'll turn that down, we'll turn that off, there we go. She comes with a full tank of gas too, very nice. Blind spot monitor unavailable. It says it's ready, but boy, we got a lot of warning lights on. <laughs> wow, okay, this is one I'd probably avoid. Um, 
look at all these lights. Hopefully you can see them. We've got uh, traction. No, no. We've got seat belts for everybody are lit up. We've got collision avoidance lit up. Passenger airbag off. We've got TPMS sensor. We've got a yellow exclamation mark there. She seems to be a little upset. Let's put it into gear. It's in drive. Let's just move it forward. All right, we'll move it backwards. And it makes this weird, weird noise. Uh, drive mode, power. Engine fired right up, gas engine fired right up, I should say. Okay, she must have been hit in the back at some point. That's my guess, or there's something covering the sensors back there. Steering feels good. Of course, with these low miles, everything is going to work on these. All right. Let's power it off. Let's pop the hood and see what the uh, see what the engine bay looks like. This one I'm not all that interested in. There's just too many lights on the dash. I mean, she's taken a few bumps, as to be expected from a rental car, right? These things aren't exactly taken the best care of, but mechanically, they're generally maintained very well. There's some damage up here, too, and that damage up there as well. This one, I think, has a little more body damage than I would really care to deal with. We'll pop the hood, take a peek, and then we'll move on because there's plenty of other cars from the rental company out here. Looks like it's missing the inner fender liner there teeny tiny little battery it's got decent tires <sighs> yeah I'm gonna pass on this one we'll go see what else they got in this lane here's another example here's a 2020 Honda Accord with 42,000 miles on it and I don't know what hit this acid rain or something. Good Lord, that is tarnished badly. That used to be chrome, I think. Now it's brown. The paint's kind of oxidized too. This wheel is bent right here and it's been curved pretty badly. Front tires are decent. Come around to the back. Back tires are pretty worn out on this one. So this is one's probably been road hard, put away wet, as probably most of these rental cars have been. Yeah, the tires are, the wheels, I should say, are terribly, terribly curved. The body on this one doesn't look too bad, though. Not bad. Low miles, of course, it's a Honda. Let's take a peek at the interior. Is this going to be, it's going to be leather? Nope. Well, kind of a mix. All right, the other one smelled normal. This one smells a little... This one smells a little, it's a little funky. Let's climb in. Is it dead? It's not dead. There we go. We got gauges. Keyless remote battery low. Disclaimer, blah, blah. Yeah, driver's responsible for operating safely. Thank you. All right. USB A port. You've got a cigarette lighter adapter right there. You've got your economy and sport buttons. Parking brake, brake hold. Lots of buttons on the steering wheel on this one. Lots and lots of buttons. Uh, adaptive cruise control, lane departure, lane keep assist. You got all your telephone, Bluetooth, radio stuff over here. Looks like a surround view camera right here. Traction control, your trip windows. I know they're gonna work, but it's not, not a bad idea to go ahead and test this kind of stuff anyway, along with air conditioning. I have no doubt that the, that the AC works, but again, We'll try it out just to just to make sure. AC on. It was already on. I turned it off. Okay, let's try it. Give her a little rev too. Sounds good. Steering feels good. Brakes feel good. Not a bad little car. Doesn't have any books. It does. It has the books in the glove box. Very nice. The AC. That's there it goes. It took it a little while a little slow but there it goes again when you're talking about low mileage cars you shouldn't have too much to be concerned about and the fact is most of this stuff is going to be under warranty uh we're only in 2023 i don't know what honda's warranty is but 
most manufacturers are somewhere between three and five years and generally somewhere around 60,000 miles. So most of these cars, if you're lucky anyway, since they were fleet vehicles, I don't know if the warranty still applies, but I think, I think these would all still have warranties. That's something I'd probably have to check with the dealers on to find out if there's a history of fleet use, would they still qualify for the factory warranty? I mean, it looks good. Let's pop the trunk real quick. I like this one. Again, these aren't... Oh, come on. These aren't like super fancy cars or anything. You know, they're pretty average cars that most people own and most people drive. And that's a good thing when it comes time to resale. The only question is, is there any content in buying these cars, doing what needs done to get them cleaned up and fixed up and ready for retail sale, and then sending them down the road? Obviously, if I brought them back to the dealer auction, I would get back probably close to what I paid for it. The fees at these auctions are very low. Like, I can buy just about any car out here, and it's only going to cost me maybe $300 in fees, and that's it. <laughs> so that aspect is pretty nice. But the question is, is there content? Now, you heard me say get them ready for retail. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about. As most of you know, I'm a wholesale dealer, which means I can't sell retail. But I've said this in a couple other videos, and I'm still working on this. But I think I have found a way to retail my vehicles out in a legitimate fashion. And that's something that we can talk about in a later video if it's something I decide to actually go through with and do. What I want you guys to do is tell me if you have any interest seeing newer model cars on the channel or if you prefer the stuff that I've always been doing. So we got another Toyota Prius here. This is a 2021 with 46,000 miles on the odometer. You see in a theme here about the same mileage. There's a Volkswagen, what is that, a Touareg with 46,000 miles. There's another Prius with 56,000. Here's a 2020, what is this, a Camry, a Toyota Corolla with 59,000 miles. So seems to be a sweet spot for the mileage there. I'm going to take a quick look around this one. Tires are in excellent shape. The body on this one is actually really good with the exception of this right here. But this is just a plastic rocker panel. It's got a few dents and scrapes. Some more right there. Not too bad. This one is far better than the other one that I was looking at. That tire is actually a little, a little low on tread there. Let's pop the trunk. Take a peek. No books, but it does have the tire tools. Let's take a look at the interior. I am not dead set on buying a Prius, but I'm kind, I'm kind of interested. I haven't even looked to see what kind of fuel economy these things get, but. I'm sure they got to be doing at least 43, 45 miles a gallon. This one kind of has a funky smell to it, but whatever, it's fine. Let's fire it up. Let's see if we got any crazy lights on this one. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, those seatbelt lights are all lit up over there. I don't know if you guys can even see that. But it was the same way on the other one, so that's almost got to be normal. We have a ready light. We do not have a yellow triangle, and we don't have all the yellow lights over there for TPMS and all that other stuff, uh, or the collision warning. None of that stuff is on on this one. So this one's already a winner in my book. The body's better. I think this is all around a better car. And hell, look at this. The average miles per gallon on this, I don't know if you can see it, but it's 47.8, almost 50 miles a gallon. Are you kidding me? All right, it's not the prettiest car out there. It's a little different looking. And it's a little outdated, I suppose, now, because I think for 2023 or 2024, Prius has a redesign. So, right into gear, forward, yep, backward. And that weird sound that it makes. You've got EV modes. EV mode not available. Oh, low battery. I don't see where it tells you your battery state of charge. It's got full gas, but aside from that, there's the gas engine. Fired right up. 75 degrees today. 
Important window works. Less important window works. Of course, the steering feels good. Brakes feel good. We can pop that hood. We'll try this air conditioning real quick. Where is the air conditioning? Right here, auto. Everything is on heat. Let's turn this on full AC. Make sure that works. There we go. Glove box. We've got books, plugs. There's all kinds of stuff in the glove box, so that's good. This is actually a pretty comfortable car. It doesn't have power seats or anything, so this is kind of a, a basic model, but it's actually quite comfortable to sit in. Very nice. It's got collision avoidance. It's got lane departure warning, lane keep assist. This is a really nice, for a base model Toyota, this is really nice, guys. I guess that all depends on who you are, though. Some of you are going to be laughing in the comments right now, saying a Toyota Prius? Not nice. I like it. I, I really do. I like the Toyota Prius. Air conditioning is ice cold, as you would expect. This Prius, I'm going to go ahead and put on the list. I don't know what to expect from these cars at auction. I have no idea what these things are going to bring. I know they're not cheap cars, obviously. We're not looking at, you know, $5,000 vehicles here, guys. Uh, full of coolant. I was going to listen to it, but the engine shut itself off. Yeah, these are not your cheapo cars that we're used to on the channel. So obviously I know that these things are going to be going for some money. I just don't know how much because this is not my typical kind of car. But I would like to, if it's okay with you guys, if you guys are going to watch this journey with me, I would like to try to move to some newer cars, something a little nicer. We can still do some weird, quirky type of cars and stuff like that. But I would like to see if there's some way of having nice cars that we can sell and hopefully make a little money on. And I'm even willing to consider if this works out and you guys want to see a dealership basically be born, a retail dealership, I would consider, and I swore I'd never do this, but I would consider transitioning my wholesale lot to retail. But I have to prove to myself that there's money in this and it's something I can do and something that I want to do. Last one on my list is the 2020 Toyota Corolla we just looked at with 59,000 miles on the odometer. I want to take a quick walk around this one as well. The tires look like they're in decent shape. The wheels aren't terribly curbed. The body looks to be decent. One way to Tulsa. So apparently this is probably at Mannheim. Um, we have a Mannheim in Tulsa, which I just joined up with. I'm now part of Mannheim, so I can buy cars from them as well. It's a base model Corolla. Good tires, good body, good paint. There's a few scrapes down the side there. Nothing serious. That's what I love about these. Nothing serious. A few bumps and bruises. There's a small dent right there. No big deal, man. These almost look too easy. Interior. Ooh. Yeah, the interior in this one, it's got a funky little smell to it. That's not bad to like. I've got all the stuff. We could detail these things up at AR headquarters. I've got an ozone machine. I've got all the tools for cleaning seats and cleaning carpets. It's not that big of a deal. We could polish paint white. Urgh. Um, I don't know about that. White. It's a red car. That is, that is, that is bizarre. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I, I think, honestly, I wouldn't even consider buying this one just because of the white. This looks really weird. And it's factory. I mean, that is factory, it looks like that. Uh, it's got an old school key. No remote start. No, man. No, I'm, I'm not really feeling this one. I mean, it's got no warning lights on the dash. Everything looks like it's probably working the way it's supposed to. Reverse. Drive. We'll turn this on AC. And let's crank the AC down just to verify it works. I'm uh, honest to God, I hate to be that shallow, but this is weird. I, 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 I don't like that white look. Um, let's see if we can turn this on a... Uh, 
There we go. Oh yeah, nice cold air. Very nice. She's got three quarters of a tank of fuel and no warning lights on the dash. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad car. It's not a bad car. I just personally, for me, I, I think this would be a hard sell because of the white. This, if the car was white or the car was black, this would make a lot more sense. But it's a it's a maroon colored car with this black everywhere. It's it's black everywhere. But then they stuck white in it. And obviously this white is dingy. It's gotten real dirty. It's going to require cleaning, and it'll get dirty again. Uh, no, not for me. Not for me. Not hating on the car at all. And the fact that there's no push to start in a 2020? Really? Yeah, I don't know about that, guys. Let's go ahead and pop the hood real quick. We'll pop the trunk to take a closer look. But I thought I would like this one a lot more than I actually do. It's got the nice aftermarket looking floor mat there. Yeah, tire tools. I see the tire down there. So she's still got all that. That's good. And under the hood. What is all that? Is that wood chips? What is going on under there? I don't know what that is. That's bizarre looking. It looks like it's oily and dirt and dust has just stuck to it. Uh, nah, I'm going to steer clear of that one. But since I'm over here, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And, and then we're going to close out this video. It's a 2018 Volkswagen. Sorry, I said it was a Touareg earlier. That was, yeah. It's a Tiguan. And it's got 46,000 miles on it. Interesting color. Is that blue? Is that white? Is it lavender? I don't know. It's a Tiguan SE TSI with, is that E-Motion? I haven't decided if I like the color or not. Um, you got a pretty nasty little ding right there, but overall, this one looks pretty nice. Interior, this one smells all right. Smells all right. You got leather seats in this one. It's very nice. You got the panoramic sunroof up there. Also really nice. Does it open itself? No? It's big brother does. All right. You got your tire, jack, tools, all that good stuff. Not too shabby. Let's take a peek at the interior here. It's a little dirty, but again, no big deal. You just got to clean it up. It does have a kind of a strange smell. What is this? I wonder why they did that. Is this going to be pushed to start? No. Yes, it is. That looks like an old GM key. Really? Okay, four motion is what that said. So it's all wheel drive. Push to start. Fired right up. It's out of gas. Do we have any warning lights on? Looks like only, only the fact that it's out of gas. That's it. Let's turn on that air conditioning. It's got dual zone climate control, of course. You've got all your different terrain modes for snow, streets, hilly areas, sand, mud, all that, all that good stuff there. It's on normal mode right now. I'm assuming it probably adjusts the suspension. Reverse. Nice. Drive. Nice. Right into gear. Steering feels good. Important window works. Less important window works. Avoid running engine. Yeah, I don't need economy tips, but thank you. Engine on due to system power needs. Wait a minute, is this a hybrid? This is not a hybrid. What does it mean engine is on due to system and power needs? Okay. I, I gotta I gotta pop the hood. I gotta pop the hood. Is this some kind this is not a hybrid. Surely it's not. It would have said somewhere on it and I didn't see anything. Oh look, a ladybug. Okay. Nah, it's not a hybrid. Boy, this thing is nasty under the hood too. Wow. 
Yeah, she's pretty dirty, man. Well, I'll be honest with you, this isn't really my cup of tea. That tire is totally bad. That one's gone too, it needs a set of tires. Which isn't a deal breaker, man. I mean, no big deal. You just put some tires on it, whatever. It's this one right here, though. It's just, nah. That's that's not one I'm interested in. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my video. If you enjoy this content over here at the DAA lot, definitely hit the thumbs up button to let me know. And consider maybe subscribing to the channel. And if you're real generous, you could share it to your social media pages. Really help me out. I appreciate each and every one of you. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.